La cimetière Saint Paul de Vence for Marc Chagall. Belarusian, but later known as French. You chose this quiet churchyard. A Jewish sun in a hilltop village. The sky, the Mediterranean, the blue. Your tombstone gleams in the Provence sun, flat and white under a cypress tree, sentinel to the god of the depths, the goat, the bride, the narrow muddy lane. Each morning your father read the Bible, stories flowed like angels on Jacob's ladder until you spun the words in colour, wedding white, cool moss green, the serpent's cunning skin. On the tomb, we leave a stone for tradition. Mark that we have been here. Then we walk back down the steep lane and wait for the evening bus. So I'm reading from Urban Harvest, which is our something, something, 26th anthology. I've been in a few of them. Um, just wonder if anybody here did any rock climbing. Well, I would have expected somebody, yeah, I would have expected somebody to do it at Toriana. <clears throat> so you might know that um, <coughs> rock climbers um, grade their climbs, and in England they begin with things like V diff, which would be a bit like climbing up a staircase up the rock, and then it quickly moves to severe. And the Americans really laugh at us actually because they sort of go level one, level two, you know. and they look at what we call a severe and they go right. Okay. So anyway, um, I used to rock climb, and then I did a bit a couple of years ago. It was a bit naughty. And um, I was writing for a novel about a climbing accident, so this poem came out as well. Severe at Stanage Edge. There are three kinds of sweat. Effort sweat as you jam upwards, hand over hand, inching the crack, feet skin tight in your rock shoes. A curlew calls overhead, you tip, feel the hallucinatory pull of gravity, the easy fall, effort done, nothing coming up to meet you but ground. Then in reverse, your cheek pressed to the grazing gritstone, you breathe, damp all the way to the fingertip, and you're in prickly sweat, flowing like a river from armpit to bra, drenching pants, knees, socks, until fear sweat breaks out. This is the worst, when you know the rock rules, and it's not fear of height or the fall, but a failing at the crux if you don't go for it and to hell with gravity. This is climbing. This is vertical. Nothing comes close. Anyways, that was a misspent use. Um, so like most writers, I have obsessions. Um, I always say, you know, in my writing um, classes, you know, if you have an obsession, you should follow it through because it's, it's where the passion lies, is in the obsessions. And I have obsessions about writers, um, and so I had my Dickens obsession. Um, and I, I've always had this thing right from childhood, that the killing of Nancy by Bill Sykes is the most horrific murder, as far as I feel, um, in literature. And I think what's the most horrific about it for me is that just at the point of killing her, he hides his eyes. And when, um, when Dickens used to read that out, grown men used to faint. Well, they didn't have, you know, video games in those days. <laughs> so, um, and if you go back to the text, after he's killed Nancy, Sykes just walks around, and he walks out of town, he sleeps in ditches. He's a man in shock. So my poem is written as though it's in his shock voice. Foulest and most cruel, the killing of Nancy. Unspeakable, oh shut the dog, take the sun and block it out, but not the gun, a blasted sound. If she cries out, if they hear, so beat down hard and hide your eyes, beat down hard, club the head, smash and grab and hide your face. Too dreadful, God, to look upon the coward way, the blooded bone, the, the pitted skull, the crumpled eye. Oh shut the dog, it's scrabbled paws. This not her face beneath the rug. I thought that G one. <laughs> <laughs> I write a lot of poems about the family, so this one's about my son. Who's 30 now and getting married to him? Snapshot at 22. 
I iron his shirt gratefully. Each crease flattened like a year of his life. Three and he's talking cars. Eleven and I must leave him at the corner. Doesn't need me for big school. Seventeen, he's out all night, driving. Twenty, a working man. He moves out, his bedroom door swinging in the breeze. But tonight, he gives me this moment. Hands over the new shirt, packed tight, and all the pins to remove, one by one. <laughs> yes. Amy. She is a Jules Holland BBC box set now. Birthday present for the better half. She sang like Piaf, died like Janice. In the yellow pub in Camden Town, she belts up, heard it on the grapevine over the lunchtime crowd. My girl frames the doorway. Held for a second in a halo of sun and raindrop, she glows. We walk to Camden Square with the weeping crowds, read scribbled broken lines on street signs, gaze bewildered at full vodka bottles, drop like wreaths on the grass verge. I keep my girl tight at my side. Same age, same body type, long dark hair. My North London Jewish girl, limbs straight, skin unpierced, unpainted, Veins clear and still here. <laughs> this one's, um, well, I suspect a lot of you know what English pen is. <laughs> English pen is established in this country to champion the imprisoned writer abroad and has, of course, become national. And um, every year they have um, a church service for the imprisoned writer. And I went one year and um, this came out of it. St. Bride's, the writer's church. <laughs> Alex Zulu, actor, band, play, Zimbabwe. Hu Shigen, dissident writer, China. Ahmad Fouad al Faham, internet writer, Saudi. Jonathan Alendu, Nigerian blogger, held incommunicado. Down Fleet Street, through the great autumn dark, the moon chained in ropes of cloud, I crossed the churchyard where Milton lodged to pen service for the imprisoned writer. Our speaker, just back from the Maldives, you know, white sand, turquoise sea, tequila cocktail, tells of a journalist locked in a metal cube who aged 20 years in one. Prison, writes Alex Zulu, is no, not a place to seek truth. After prayer and the soft flutter of banknotes into a collection bucket, the blessed freedom to write, I ride the bus home by clear moonlight to family and a glass of green tea. This one's about my mum. Christmas Eve 2011 Each August she would telephone Voice downbeat, uncertain What are we doing for Christmas? Immersed in every day and getting through I wasn't responsive Yet we always gathered Ate the turkey, watched TV We didn't have a tree Or a fairy balanced on plastic pine We didn't pull crackers It wasn't our way Ironic then that she should die on Christmas Eve. Twenty years on, and I sit tonight, watch the outside candle flicker on the sideboard, try to recall the sound of her voice, the smile she always beamed at me. Count your blessings, she said. I had a moan. Here they are. My son is well. My daughter is near. My husband loves me, and I had good parents, proper parents. Not everyone can say that. <coughs> and I'm going to finish um, with a poem that starts in Hampstead and ends an awful long way away. 
Uh, my daughter used to come with me here, actually, and uh, then eventually she went to university, and the first time I came with Arthur, everyone said, so where's Ruth? <laughs> Anyhow, after she left university, she then decided to go travelling to Southeast Asia, <laughs> which bothered us enormously, because we'd never been that far. So I lay awake at night worrying about it. Anyway, she was fine. I remember when she had all these injections, and the nurse said, um, you need to carry your malaria stuff with you because when you're on those buses that travel up through the peninsula, the, the mosquito nets over the windows might have holes in them. So I'm lying there thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to get bitten to death. <laughs> so then she texts me and she says, the windows are air conditioned, the air buses are air conditioned, and the windows never open. <laughs> she didn't see mosquitoes the whole time. <laughs> anyway, so I wrote this poem in a panic. Travelling East. Down the hill from Whitestone Pond, spring has sealed green the horizon. St. Paul's tucked along the river, hidden now for months, Hampstead Heath, the magnificence of tree. She lounges in the passenger seat, flicking channels. Van Morrison on Kiss FM takes her far beyond this winding road, my long-legged brown-eyed girl. Smooth skin, tattooed deep, needles brimming goodness, Rabies, typhoid, tetanus, wrapped up and bound for Southeast Asia. She has erected an internal shield. 50 litre backpack leans without a care by the door. Next week, she will sleep beneath her impregnated mosquito net. Snakes hissing in the night. Avoid water, the saliva of monkeys. She will travel a geography I have only read about. My wisdom outdated. Route maps no further east than Jerusalem. In a language without reference, she will ride north, trails bubbling adventure, and just a text intermittent between paddy fields to link us. Well, I hold my breath for weeks. I did. <laughs>